Hello, everyone. My name is Jimmy Sun. Today, I will talk about a book we just recently published, entitled "Introduction to Deep Learning for Healthcare." So, this is joint work by Danny Kachel and myself, and is published by Springer. So, this is a, actually a textbook that were written for my、uh, graduate level course on deep learning for healthcare. It spent us about two years to do this on and off, and I'm quite excited. This is finally got published. So in this short video, I will quickly go over the structure of the book, and so show you how the book looked like, and hopefully you will get it and read it. Thank you. And so this is the book, and we kind of、uh, organized this using still the deep learning methodology as a way to、uh, structure the book. But in each chapter, we will talk about both the methodology and the case study of the the method. For example, we start with introductions, then we talk about healthcare data, then we will introduce all this machine learning basics such as supervised learning and supervised learning evaluations metrics in chapter three. Then we get into the deep learning part. We first talk about deep neural networks, then cover embeddings. And talk about convolution neural network (CNN) and talk about recurrent neural network (RNN). Then we present autoencoder. Then go to the more advanced deep neural network methods such as attention models, graph neural network, memory networks, and generated models such as SCAN and VAE. So if you notice that for each of the chapters. We will talk about the the methods. For example, in the graph neural network chapter, we talk about graph neural networks and different variants of graph neural networks, such as、uh, GCN, graph convolution neural network, massive passing neural network, MPNN, graph attention networks. Then we will present a set of case study that using those methods in healthcare. They usually a、uh, paper publication associated with that work. And so that's the structure of the book. So next, I will show you chapter by chapter what we covered very quickly. So give you a, a, a kind of a basic understanding how this book looked like. So introduction chapter one is just talking about more of a motivating application of why deep learning become important in healthcare, such as medical imaging analysis. I mean, predictive modeling, clinical trial matchings. Molecule prediction and generation. So that's just kind of a motivating example. How? What are the exciting healthcare or machine learning tasks right in healthcare that you can learn and using deep learning models?、So、then we talk about who we are and then the organization of the book. Right. So that's the kind of the、uh, just the introduction of this this、uh, this book. Then, since this is a textbook, so we also have a very simple exercises after each chapter. It's mostly multiple choice questions, but it's just、uh, we have that、um, exercise in each chapter as well. So, in chapter two, we talk about healthcare data and the important healthcare data, such as electronic health records. Then we cover the life cycle of healthcare data, how they are generated. And what are the different players in this healthcare space, like providers, payer, pharmacy, pharmaceutical companies, contract research organization, government agencies, and patients, researchers? Then talk about the life cycle of the data, how the different type of data are generated, inter- I mean, by these different players. Then we talk about different types of data, structured healthcare data, such as.、Uh, Structured medical codes, and then we talk about unstructured data such as clinical notes, continuous type of data, clinical、uh, like EEG, ECG type of signals. Then we talk about imaging data and other biomedical data set for drug discovery, such as molecule structures and other gene expression data, and so on. Then we in section.、Uh, Two point three. We talk about healthcare data standards,、uh, such as ICD codes,、uh, CPT, I mean, NDC, and so on. And then we talk about different 
ontology of the healthcare data, how they're organized. And yeah, that's chapter two, healthcare data. And then chapter three, we will give a quick introduction of machine learning basics. We start with introducing the predictive modeling pipeline. How do you build a predictive model in general? Then we will cover different algorithms in supervised learning first, such as logistic regressions and softmax regression and gradient descent method and a stochastic and mini batch gradient descent. Right? All these are kind of important for neural network models. So that's what why we selected here in this chapter. Then we talk about unsupervised learning. In this case, we present principal and component analysis, PCA, and clustering type of methods, such as uh, k-means clusters, clustering. Then we will introduce different evaluation metrics, uh, metrics for regression tasks, such as mean square errors, root mean square error, and so on. Then we talk about uh, metrics for classification tasks, such as accuracy, precision, recall, F1 score, specificity, and then talk about uh, other type of metrics such as error under the ROC curve, and then go to multi-class classifications, and then present evaluation metrics for clustering methods. And yeah, that's the chapter three, machine learning basics. Then in chapter four, we will present a deep neural network We'll start with a single neuron, then talk about activation functions, loss functions, then how do we train a single neuron, then talk about a multi-layer neural networks. How do you represent this network? How do you train this neural network through forward computation and backward propagation? And then we'll talk about different parameters in the neural network and hyperparameters in the network you have to set. That's the method part. Then we will talk about different case studies of deep neural networks in healthcare data. So we talk about readmission prediction from EHR data. Then we present a, a drug property prediction with deep neural network. And that's chapter four. So chapter five, we talk about embedding method. It's another set of very important neural network methods. Start with famous word to vec embeddings. And then we'll talk about how do you visualize the data after processing with neural network. This famous um, TSNI visualizations and something like this. And you can visualize the embedding vectors, very high dimensional embedding vectors in a two dimensional space, right? This is TSNI plot. And then we'll talk about some healthcare application of word to vec then we will talk about some additional embedding methods specifically designed for handling electronic health record data, such as Matubec, and another extension of that called MIMES. So those are kind of specific embedding methods for handling EHR data, leveraging the hierarchical structure of the EHR data. So that's chapter five, embedding. And in chapter six, we talk about convolution neural network, CNN. We start with the intuition behind CNN, then talk about different architecture of CNN, the 1D convolution example and the 2D convolution examples. Then we talk about pooling layers, fully connected layer, and then talk about the spec propagation algorithm on CNNs. And then we will introduce different architecture of CNN that has been proposed throughout, throughout time. We start with Lynette, talk about uh, AlexNet, VGG network, and InceptionNet, ResNet, and DenseNet. So those are different generation of CNN models. And then we go to different case studies, start from uh, diabetic retinopathy detections from imaging, then to a skin cancer detections, then to neurological events detection, 
then how do you handle pathology images, and then how do you handle ECG signal for classifications, and then how do you handle X-ray images with CNN for COVID classifications. So that's a lot of different examples of CNN applying to different type of healthcare data. So that's chapter six. Chapter seven, we talk about recurrent neural network, RNN, and we first introduce the basic notations and construct in RNN. Then we present the famous back propagation through time algorithms. How do you train a RNN model? So forward pass and backward pass. Then we'll introduce uh, two different RNN variants, namely the long short term memory LSTM method, and then the gated recurrent unit GRU method. And then we'll cover some additional extension of RNN, such as bidirectional RNN and sequence to sequence model, where you have a RNN encoder, another RNN decoder, and to construct this uh, sequence to sequence model. Then we talk about different case studies, such as heart failure detections from EHR data, longitudinal EHR data then sequential clinical events predictions. Then we talk about how to use RNN to de-identify clinical nodes and, and also how to learn to prescribe medications combination from this longitudinal EHR data. So that's chapter seven, recurrent neural network. Chapter eight, we talk about autoencoder. So this is Unsupervised neural network methods. We introduce the basics of autoencoder, then talk about a few variants of that, such as sparse autoencoder, such as the, the embeddings become sparse vector as opposed to a dense vectors. Then have a stack autoencoder, so you can actually train a multiple layer of encoder and decoders and stack them together. Then we have a uh, denoising autoencoder, so you actually flip or adding some noise to the input signals and still training an uh, autoencoder with that type of uh, noisy signals and trying to hopefully recover the original signal without the noise and that give us a more robust autoencoder. And then we talk about case study so using stack autoencoder to convert EHR data into uh, patient embedding vectors, got the patient. Then we talk about another one using a sparse autoencoder in combination with Gaussian process for handling irregularly sampled clinical data. So that's chapter eight, autoencoder. Then we talk about attention model. Right? So here the attention model is so from chapter nine onward, we'll talk about more advanced neural network, right? Before this, those CNN, RNN, and autoencoder, or the basic DNN, they're considered kind of the foundational or more classical deep neural network method, right? From chapter nine onward, we will talk about some more advanced deep neural network model. And this chapter nine is about attention mechanism, right? This is kind of a crucial techniques that enable many of the more advanced neural network models. So we talk about this in a lot of details in this chapter, and we actually give quite a few examples, right? They'll talk about attention first, then give many examples, right? So we have attention model over longitudinal EHR records, and then we talk about this attention model for handling medical ontology type of data. Then we talk about how do you build an attention-based model for classifying clinical notes into ICD codes. So it's how do you automatically assign ICD codes to clinical notes. Then we will talk about how to build attention or multiple level of attention model for handling ECG electrocardiography data for heart disease detection. So that's chapter nine. Chapter 10, we talk about graph neural network. We first introduce some notations 
and task on graphs. And here we talk about no classification, link prediction, community detection, graph property prediction, and graph generation task. So they all have different application in healthcare. And then we introduce a different algorithm of graph neural network. Start with a graph convolution neural network, then talk about message passing neural network, then graph attention networks. After that, we will present a number of case studies, starting from drug molecule embedding with graph convolution neural network, GCN. Then we will present another um, polypharmacy side effect prediction with GCN, then talk about drug discovery right, using deep learning, using a message passing neural network to design new antibiotic, oh, so, uh, sorry, new antibiotics. Then we will talk about spatial temporal prediction using graph attention network, GAT, for pandemic COVID case count prediction. So that's chapter 10. Chapter 11, we talk about memory networks. And we start with the original memory networks and then talk about end-to-end -end memory networks. So you can train this using uh, deep neural networks in an end-to-end -end fashion. Then we will talk about some powerful kind of memory network-based models called self-attention or transformer model. Then we'll talk about the extension of that for handling text data called BERT, our pre-training of deep bi-directional transformers. Then we'll present a set of case studies, start from a doctor recommendation for clinical trial recruitment or doctor to vect using memory networks. And then we'll present another case study for medication recommendation using memory networks. Then after that, we will talk about this pre-training graph augmented transformer for medication recommendation, or GBIRD. So that's chapter 11, memory network. The last chapter is about generative model. So here we'll talk about two popular neural network-based generative models, generated adversary network, GAN, and variation autoencoder, VAE. So we present the GAN framework first in a lot of details. Then we present variation autoencoder, VAE, and start from the deep learning perspective of VAE, then present the probabilistic model perspective of VAE. So after that, we will uh, show you some example of using those generative model with scan where you can we can generate realistic but synthetic patient records then with vae we can generate molecules there's uh, two different examples of that and that's it that's the whole book i hope you enjoyed my um, review and uh, if we go to the very beginning let me see if i can go to so I hope you enjoy the book and thank you very much.